We're so glad you joined us for the Dufresne Faith Journal today. We're going to be picking up where we left off, mm -hmm. Pastor Ruby. This is Pastor Ruby Ramos that's with me. And we started on the last episode giving a testimony. Yes. Um, because we've been talking about the role that angels play in abundance. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So God's plan is abundance. Yeah. So abundance won't ever offend him. That's his plan. That's his plan. That's his plan. Yeah. And so uh, because that eternal life is in us, it's to produce abundance in every arena. And as pastors, it should produce, it can produce abundance in their churches. Sure, yeah. The congregate, for the congregate, everything. Everything. And so uh, we were talking about though a testimony that to get into the abundance, sometimes we need divine help. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can just do, do a business transaction and things can happen as they ought. But sometimes we need divine help for business transactions yes, to huh? happen. And in a church for business transactions to happen. Uh, we were talking about how 35 to 40 years ago, Ooh. now see my husband and I were married right at 30 years before he went home to be with the Lord. So before him and I married, he had a certain event that happened. Uh, the congregation he was pastoring at the time, and he had put the congregation in a building that they were leasing with the option to purchase it. Mm -hmm. At the end of the lease, they needed uh, 126000 to pick up the option. Yeah. But the seller did not want them to pick up the option because the property value had just multiplied so right. much. He wanted the money, you know, at a, at a higher price. Mm -hmm. So, um, So three months before, the money is due, he still doesn't have the 126000 they needed. Mm -hmm. Now, they, uh, they'd received offerings at the church and only came up with $10,000. So he sowed that mm -hmm. into someone else's building fund yeah. as a seed, which is, it, listen, 10000 sounds like a lot till you need 126000 exactly. Then it just sounds like a drop in the bucket, right. doesn't it? So, um, he sowed that and then he was three months before the money was due, he was in his hotel room, he was traveling and preaching in a, at a convention and he was getting ready for the morning meeting and the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, don't go to the meeting this morning. Have somebody else do the meeting because I'm gonna to talk to you. So he sent someone else to preach and uh, he, uh, he was in the hotel room just walking the floor praying and he heard the door open and he turned around and there were two big angels standing there and he said they were so large that the ceiling disappeared and their heads went up to where the ceiling wow. would have been. So uh -huh. we're talking about nine, ten feet. Yeah. And he said they had on armor uh -huh. and they had uh, dents in their armor as though they had been doing battle. And the angel spoke and said, we have been sent from the throne room of heaven to straighten out your finances. Wow. So he... Uh, he, they, they said that, then he just stood there. Mm -hmm. And he's waiting for them, you know, to do something further. Yeah. And they're not doing anything further. They're just looking at him. <laughs> so see, evidently, angels need our participation. Uh -huh. they, need, they need something. So he said to them, what are you waiting on then? And they said, we're waiting on the faith command. So now they let us know what they need. They need, number one, faith, uh -huh. and they need a command. So faith can't be released until you say something. That's right. Or until you act mm -hmm. in line with faith. So even though he had faith, they didn't get their command until he spoke that until faith. Until he spoke it, yeah. So I want you to read, if you would, because this is such a great verse. It is a shows great this. verse. Um, we're reading from Psalm 103 and in verse 21, actually it's verse 20. Uh -huh. It says, bless the Lord ye his angels, that excel in strength, uh -huh. Uh -huh. that do His commandments, yeah. hearkening unto the voice of His Word. So, the Word needs a voice. Yes, ma'am. Ed used to say this, he said, you can, you can have this Bible right here, you can open it up and go like this, and you don't hear a thing. Right, that's right. It's us that gives voice to, to this. God spoke it, got it in this format, but then we have to put it in our words and our mouth and give it the format so that faith is now released through that. Uh -huh. And that's what that verse says, that they hearken to the voice. So this is what the angel said to them. It's, that's what the angel said to Ed. It said, uh, he said, what are you waiting on? They uh -huh. said, we're waiting on the faith command. So they're waiting for him to say something. Yeah, yeah. This is Pastor Ruby where I think a lot of people miss it. Miss it, yes. 
they need a supply, mm -hmm. but they're just waiting for the supply to come. And the supply is waiting on their faith. Wow. They're wow. waiting for their faith uh -huh. to say something. That's right. So Ed said, remember the scripture, my God shall supply. Mm -hmm. And this is the verse that he gave him in Philippians 4:19. But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So go cause the money to come. So that happened three months before the money's due. Two days before the money's due. So now almost three months has passed yeah. mm -hmm. since he saw those angels and sent them because as soon as he gave that faith command, those angels disappeared. Sure. So he didn't see him again for three months. Uh -huh. So now it's two days before the money is due. Ed has his attorney in his office at the church and they're trying to find a way to get an extension. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, sometimes a seller, he's wanting to sell it. So he's, mm -hmm. he will work with you if you need an extension. Right. But this guy, because the, the property values had risen, he did not want him to sell, he didn't want him to buy it. He wanted to put it back on the market and get a bigger price sure. for it. Sure, yeah. So he wouldn't work with him. So Ed is looking for any way he can find an extension legally. And so the, the attorney is there with him in the office and said, Ed, there is absolutely no way this, uh, this contract is ironclad. Mm -hmm. So while they're meeting, the secretary rings into Ed's office and said, there's a man out here who wants to talk to you about the building. So he thought that it was the seller. Mm -hmm. And he thought, I don't want to deal with him right now. And so he, Ed told the attorney, go out and talk to him. Well, the attorney went out and talked to him. Then he came back and he says, I think you need to go talk to this guy. So Ed walks out there, but it wasn't the seller of the building. It was a man that had only periodically visited mm -hmm. Ed's church. He was not a member. He was a member of another church and he would periodically attend Ed's church. And so Ed went out there and this man is wearing a jogging suit. Looks, you know, what doesn't, doesn't look like he's, you know, just average uh -huh. in dress and doesn't look like he has anything, finances in particular. And so Ed walks out there and the, the conversation started like this. He said, I've been to your church and hear you preach. You scare me. I don't like your preaching. <laughs> he said, my pastor stands behind my pulpit, behind the pulpit rather. Uh -huh. And he says, but you walk all over the front of the church. And Ed thought, I don't need this today. <laughs> you know, when you're believing God and <laughs> there's pressure coming mm -hmm. at you. Yes, yes. Circumstances coming at uh -huh. you and you're, 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 you're keep it doing, you know, using your faith to keep them off of you. Right. So that you don't become worried and get under pressure. Uh -huh. And so that the last thing you need is someone who comes and tells you that they don't like they you, don't like, don't you. like your preaching, right. they don't like the way you preach, they don't mm -hmm. like your sermon style, uh -huh. you know. So Ed's thinking, great, this is not what I need. Mm -hmm. And so he said, I don't like your preaching, you scare me. No, I, I have to correct that. He didn't say, I don't like your preaching. I don't like the way you, you preach, preach because you don't stay behind the pulpit. That was his big, that was his big complaint. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, he said, but there have been two fellas in my room, in my house, uh -huh. that have told me to come and bring you a check for $126,000. So here is a cashier's check for $126,000. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't care whether you like where I stand I when I preach or not. You bring me that, that we're all good. And so notice this, that those two angels were obvious to someone else. Yeah, yeah. That they were dealing and mm -hmm. influencing this man. This man. We don't, I don't know whether he saw them, but he said, there's been two fellas in my room and they told me. Now see, people would say, well, why did it take all the three months? Why didn't God do it three months out instead mm -hmm. of two days before? And people will say, now see, that's God. He's a last minute God, you know, and they'll start accusing him yeah. wrongfully of taking his time, mm -hmm. taking too long. When really it's not that God takes so long is that the devil opposes till the very last minute. This That's, is what people yes, need to understand yes. because then people get offended or they throw away their faith because they think God is not moving for them. Right. When it's really the devil is hindering. 
And see, God has to work through men. The Bible sure. says that God uh -huh. will bless us through the hands of men. The and men. sometimes uh -huh. men are slow. God's not slow, but men but can be men. slow. That's a good point, Pastor. That's a good point. So you don't know mm -hmm. if, that, if those fellas, those angels, he called them the fellas. Right. Were in his, in his room three months pr uh -huh. prior. And maybe he just, just now. Because sometimes, you know, it takes a while for people to settle that they're sure. going to agree with God. That's right. And that's a big chunk of money big, that's to a, give to someone you don't like. Yes. You don't even go to their church. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Because you could reason that this exactly. maybe needs to go to my church. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, why would I take this money and give it to another church? But so it's not that God takes and God waits till the last minute to try to put pressure under you to squeeze you. Yeah. But the devil opposes, opposes till the very last minute. And people need to remember that so that they don't give up on their faith. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Best. Or so they don't think their faith isn't working or that God isn't working for right. them. The devil fights till the last minute to try to hinder. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, of course, then now Ed's got this check for $126,000. Uh -huh. Two days before the money's due. So they're able to pay that and pick up the option. Mm -hmm. So now they are the landowners. Mm -hmm. Now they owe... $374,000 because the total price for the building was half a million dollars. And this was in the 70s. Wow, that's big. So, you know, that, that was a big, big chunk then. So now they paid 126,000 of it. Now they owe 374,000. So, you know, now they're, they've got financing for that. Sure. So, you know, so they're gonna pay that out monthly. So the next Sunday service, you know, of course they're, they're thrilled because they picked up the option. Yeah. The building is now theirs. And there was a guest minister that had been scheduled for that Sunday. So this guest minister came. And he said, when he got up to preach, he said, he looked out at the congregation, uh -huh. and he said, that fella, way in the back, come up here and obey God. So Ed turned around to see who he mm. would be referring to. And it was this man that had come in with um, wearing a jogging suit, carrying the, <laughs> the cashier's check in uh -huh. Ed's office. It was that man. Now mm -hmm. see, normally on a Sunday morning, he would have been in his own church. Yeah. Uh -huh. But he was at this church on this Sunday morning. So Ed turned around and saw that it was him. Mm -hmm. And he tried to get the guest minister's attention. Says he's already obeyed God. <laughs> you know, he gave $126,000. Right. So he, uh, the minister, though, said, no, you've got something to do. Come up here and obey God. So this same man uh -huh. comes all the way up from the back of the auditorium, comes up and stands by the guest minister. The guest minister hands him the microphone and he said, those same two fellas are back in my room. Oh, wow. <laughs> those same two angels. And he said, give me a couple of days and I'm going to go get a cashier's check for $374,000 and pay off the whole thing. Oh my Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, wow. Now that's abundance, isn't it? Oh, that's sure abundance. Is. Sure. Now see, without those angels participating, mm -hmm. I don't know that there would have been that kind of spectacular, spectacular. supply. Right, right. But those angels had a role in that. Wow. For us to have abundance, there's a role for there's us role to take. For and we have to use our faith, but then there's a role that sometimes it calls for divine help. That's right. Of these angels. Yes. I tell you, people need to pick up. Mm -hmm. can't, can't we encourage them? Sure. Pick up uh -huh. things that maybe you've let go. Yeah. Because you, you tried and you tried and mm -hmm. you tried to bring it to pass and it was in your heart, but you couldn't make it happen. Bring angels in on it. Wow. Praise God. See, we know they're available. Now, Ed saw them, but we don't have to wait till we see them. Yeah, that's right. We don't have to wait till we see them. Dad Hagen gave us by the Spirit four steps that, that Jesus told him. If you need money, if you need finances, he said, don't pray for me to send it because he says, I don't have any American currency in heaven. It's on the earth. Right. So he said, these are the four steps you take. Number one, claim how much you need. Mm -hmm. Number two, tell, the, tell Satan to take his hands off that money. Mm -hmm. And he said, number three, tell the angels to go and cause that money to come. And then number four, worship God till the money shows up. So notice this. He said, tell Satan to take his hands off of it. Uh huh. And then tell the angels to go and cause money to come. See, you're going to need divine assistance because when Satan takes his hand off the money you need, you don't know where it's at. We don't know where it's at. That's if, right. If I were to say, uh -huh. if I were to say this, if if these if these glasses represented mm -hmm. funds, money, 
And I said, you said, Father, I need $10,000. I, I claim $10,000. Now, Satan, you take your, your hands off oh. that money. Now, see, he's got, he's got reservoirs all over where he's, you know, where people are holding up money. Right, yeah. The wealth of the sinner. Mm -hmm. It's laid up. It's laid up. Where is it laid up? It's laid up with the sinner. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, uh, the wealth of the sinner is laid up, but it's for the just. It's mm -hmm. laid up with them, but it's for us. So we don't know who God's going to, or who is available, who's yeah. going to, who is going to, you know, be brought into that factor, that equation. So you tell Satan, take your hands off my money. So he has to take his hands off of it. And that money that the sinner was holding, he has to take his hands off of it. Uh -huh. yeah. So now it's there and available, but you don't know where it's at, <laughs> but the right. angels do. And angels that's do. why yes. he said, Claim how much uh -huh. you need, tell Satan to take his hands off of it, and then tell the angels to go. Mm -hmm. Because when Satan took his hands off of it, now it's available for the angels right. to go and cause it to come. To come. Into your hands. And it can come through the hands of men. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily that the angels are going to put it in your mailbox or put it in your purse. Yes. But they will give it to the men. They'll get it to the hands of the men who will get it to you. Right. And so that's why we need their help. Yes, People need to know this, don't yes. they? Yes, Pastor. Absolutely. Yeah, you can't in pastoring accomplish that financially without their help. Without I their can't. Help. Uh huh. True. And uh, believers can't accomplish the plan of God without that help. So, we we want you to take note of these mm -hmm. things and apply these things. It'll be a blessing to you. Yes. And yes. Uh, listen, we've got some more to talk about with angels. More to talk about with abundance. So make sure you join us next time. You don't want to miss it. We're so glad you joined us today. God bless you. Thank you for watching today's show. Be sure to check out all the latest episodes on our YouTube page. For more information, follow us on Facebook or visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org.